I, I would like very much to tell you how to set up this ceremony because, you know, if you're going to have a guest and he's a very, very special guest, you're going to have to get things prepared for his coming. Uh, you know, if sup just supposing maybe that the Pope were going to come to your home and he, he really, Pope Francis was going to come and he had accepted a dinner invitation. How important would that be for you to set it up? Or supposing some very important figure in, in the world or in your family were going in, 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 your, in your work world were going to come. What kind of details would you take care of? Because you would like that person to know how welcome he or she would be into your home. And so I, I do remember once, you know, when uh, I was very, very much waiting and Mother Teresa was going to come. And uh, she was going to come and she was actually going to come and visit. And I was with my sister. And I remember my sister just kind of running around and getting so many things ready that I would have never thought of. And so as I think I'm talking to you, my sisters, and you, my brothers, to prepare for Jesus coming into your home. Who knows that but you? All those little details that you would like to have ready. First, you ought to go to confession. What a great preparation for the enthronement. What state is my heart? So every enthronement is prepared for by a thorough inventory of the junk that may be inside of me. And so as I prepare my heart to receive him, a thorough examination, how do I do that? Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart to reveal to you what is it, Father, that separates me from your Son spiritually. And as the Father begins to reveal to you, maybe that particular person whom you haven't forgiven, maybe that person that you've judged, or maybe that, that one whom you haven't uh, really been speaking to or you've been ignoring or you're jealous of, or maybe that particular lust that you have fallen into, whatever that might be, that cleansing of my heart by examination, by going to confession, and by preparing my heart. I want to be so ready in my heart to receive you. I offer this to you fathers. I offer this to you mothers. And talk to your children about all of you cleansing your hearts for the preparation of Jesus coming into your home because he wants all of us to be prepared interiorly. What about the external preparation? As he is going to come, find that place in your home. Your home is an external expression of your own hearts. Where is that place in your home where we all meet? Usually it's a living room. That's what we call it. That place in which we live as a family. We, or maybe it's your dining room where you gather. And this is the place where so much activity takes place. That would be the place where you would want to have his presence expressed by this image. The image that he asked us to use when he revealed himself was the image of his pierced heart. He told us that I would like you to see this love of mine. And as I just explained to you, what that love is like. It's all, whatever I have used. It's only like that. It's fire. It's, it's everlasting. It's eternal. It's so powerful that get an image that will reflect that to you and remind you of it to the extent that it does. And then also get another image of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
Usually, it's there asked that the Father will place the image of the Sacred Heart in that place of the home. Find wherever that place is, in your living room, in your dining room, where all of us can see it. And before we go to work, before we go to bed, why we're going to be together, when we're going to be together, wherever we're going to gather, that we will be able to see this image and greet him. If you're on your way to school, to greet Jesus, I'm going out, I need you, I want you to be with me. That's why it's there. So, and, bef and before you go to bed at night or while you're eating your meals or whatever is going to be going on, that it's the central place in your home. That is the place where we gather and that's the place where he wants to be. He, his love is so, not just in my bedroom. I had a, <clears throat> a cousin who does not agree with her husband that the sacred heart should be the head of the house. She had uh, her, her relationship with her dad and her mom, but her whole relationship, I think, she's a baptized Catholic and Christian. And I remember going to their home and no, I don't want his picture. And she had all kinds of other pictures and, and things. I said, well, you, you don't want Jesus. No, I don't. And that, that was really very firm. And he did. Now, they were, they were retired. And so he dedicated a whole room where he took the image. And I remember going there and he placed it there. And he said, you know, Father, when, when we were talking that I really want to uh, just, I want to communicate with her about this love, but I really want him to know, first of all, that he is my first love. And uh, I, I still remember that. No, the, 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 the situation in the enthronement is not to have this in his bedroom. That's where it was. And I did it because that's where that family was. But hopefully they will come together so that they can have it in, in the living room or where they both can come together. And I, I don't even see how they can come together in, in, in fully in their bedroom if they can't come fully together in their living room. How do, how do you just go to bed together as husband and wife if you aren't together in this, in this intimacy which the husband has for God and his wife doesn't. And so this union, and some of you have those kinds of unions where the, the one is very united with God and the other is far from God. And the one who is united with God must continually ask that the heart of Jesus. What is the key, especially for the family, that each member of the family be united with God. You see, how do you grow a garden and have it come together? How do you grow a rose? If you take and if you plant the rose, and this is what the family is, you don't tie roses together and bring them together. You trace them to their roots. The root of love in the family is God. And the sacred heart is the root, and he's the one that we plant this love in. And so the image of the sacred heart is like a, 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 a garden, and, it, and he is the, that ground in which this family is planted. And as each one traces their love into the root, which is God, they come together and they bloom. They're more beautiful. And one can be withered and the other can be flowering. And as you reflect that love, then it can bring that health to one another. The more love is there, the more that will flower as a family. It is the greatest root of family love that we could possibly have, the sacred heart. Planted in his heart, we grow together intimately of husband and wife, intimately as 
parents and children, intimately as brothers and sisters, and eventually grandchildren, that drawing that will bring us the health and the reunion and the, the flowering of the family again. That's why it's so important. Have him there, right publicly, where you are going to present him. And then right next to his image, after the Father, with an act of consecration, we all stand around. How do I publicly then profess this? Before whom? Before you, God, before you, Sacred Heart, gathered in the Holy Spirit, we are going to pledge ourselves to you. And that's why very intimate with the enthronement of the Sacred Heart is the understanding and the awareness of what I'm doing. I am taking my heart and uniting it with his heart and presenting through him to the Father who I am. Now, no one can do that except the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has gathered this little family into that intimacy of union individually in each heart as we gather around the image. So when you get your enthronement ceremony, first you're going to have to profess your faith. And those vows that you took when you were baptized, rejecting Satan, his works, his empty promises, believing in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, who suffered, died, was buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We profess our faith in this. We believe this as a family. We are united in our faith, and now we are being united in our love. And we are being united in our trust that God is hearing our prayer and we are presenting ourselves individually and each to you by this consecration. And so we're receiving and being received by God through this ceremony. It's really a family event that just doesn't last for that ceremony of an hour or an hour and a half and even followed by a party. I hope that there could be a celebration of this event and the particular date. There is a certificate that's given in this packet that you will receive to have this ceremony had in your family so that each name and the date that it happened is registered because this is a powerful event. God hears this and God pledges you his love, his commitment. It isn't that I am going to give this to you, God, by enthroning you. I now am going to be committed to you as your family. You and the promises that come with this, you will never be lost. Every one of you that is going to make this ceremony, I promise you, God says, if you pledge yourselves to me, I am pledging all the power of God and myself to you. You will be with me in paradise. Do not be afraid. And all of the powers that are going to take over here and the promises which I will eventually tell you about that come with this, the promises that he has made to you, when you do this with him, he who is the eternal God, is going to respond to you. You have been brought to this through grace and the Holy Spirit. You have opened your hearts to it and said yes to it. And now you offer this and pledge this to God by this consecration. And you know what the enthronement means? You are the king of my heart. You know, we don't use that word too often, but you are the one who is the Lord of my heart. There is another king that many of us have worshiped, and that is the I, me. I have pledged myself to take care of myself. 
I have pledged myself to always follow what I want to do. I have pledged myself. There is no medium. I either, and this is the huge, huge sin we inherited from our first parents. When I, through Eve and Adam, said to God, no, I am going to not keep your commandment. I am going to do what I want to do because the evil one tricked our first parents into doing what they thought was going to make them equal to God. I'm not equal to you, God. The ego, centricity, the ego, reliance, whatever that is that has taken over in my heart, and each one of us has it. We inherited it from our first parents. And when now I am saying to you, God, no, in every case, your will be done, your kingdom come, I am your subject, you are my Lord, you are my king, and I am under your power and authority. And the I will step back and become shriveled more and more. And the God in me, the Christ in me, will grow each and every day. This is the enthronement and first the heart. And now when I watch my husband do it, when I watch my son do it, when I watch my father do it, this fantastic power that begins to take place in the family. And when family after family is able to do it, my cousins are joining us. My neighbors are joining us. The community is joining us one by one. Not I'm doing it. The enthronement of the Sacred Heart isn't me bringing the kingdom of God to earth. It's Jesus through us. And so when we do this ceremony, it's not that we do the ceremony. It's that He, the Holy Spirit, is bringing about a new kingdom in the world. And so the ceremony is an expression and taking place almost like a beautiful gem of prayer in the midst of the ceremony. Right in the center of it is the Our Father. Now this family in Christ stands before God. Can you see now the meaning of the prayer when Jesus said, when you pray, pray. Now think of that. Christ in each one of us, in a family, husband, wife, children, mother, children. If there's just two, whatever that be, the family, this little community in this house that has taken the image of the Sacred Heart and placed the image of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and consecrated it through her Immaculate Heart has this grace been brought into our home. And we pray the Hail Holy Queen at this ceremony. We pray the creed. We pray the consecration. We pray to our, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And now, Father, we are prepared. Here is Jesus. Here is Mary in our little celebration. And now all of us together pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where? In this little home. Thy kingdom come. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, can you see the power of what's happening here? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Here in this little place as it is in heaven. Heaven and earth come together and can always be there. Your home can be a sanctuary of God. Before that image of the Sacred Heart, just as before the image of the, of the tabernacle in the church, you can place a little red candle. I, I know in my brother's home that I, I was just recently there. 
that's what's there, shining in that home before the enthroned image of the Sacred Heart. I know in my sister's home, when I visited her the last time, that's where that little red candle is standing. And I know in my brother's home, the family, and then, of course, we have our parents who are in heaven, and I know there's also my sister who's there. So we have family where they had the enthronement. As thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our loved ones in heaven are joining the same Lord, the same. What we do by faith here on earth is being done in heaven by direct vision. What we do in hope here on earth is achieved by them in heaven. What we do by love on earth is the very same thing they're doing in heaven. The very same thing. And so on earth as it is in heaven, and we pray today as you watch and want to prepare yourselves in your home, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.